Good Sunday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. The quiet end of a very busy weekend in the Mid-South area. Cleanup continues across portions of the Mid-South, especially northern Mississippi, and going to be seeing a lot of that going on throughout the next few days. Add to that, there's going to be the possibility of some more rainfall out there, which could slow, again, the possibility of cleanup in the Mid-South area. So we could be, look at, could be looking at more problems out there from all of that, not to mention we've got the potential for some flood flooding going on and the possibility of maybe some more rainfall to add on top of that. So we've got a lot happening in the course of the next couple of days. We're going to walk you through all of that coming up here in just a little bit. So stay tuned for more on that with Weather Overtime. If you haven't been here before, again, this is our online video weather blog designed to give you an opportunity to take an extended look at what's going on with the weather around the Mid-South area and our opportunity to kind of enlighten everybody with what goes on beyond a two to three minute usual weather cast on air. So again, we'll give you more details on what's going on across much of the Mid-South coming up here uh, into and around the area for right now and again throughout the course of the next several days. So if you have any plans for outdoors for tonight, again, it's going to be a bit brisk out there. We'll talk about that forecast coming up here into just a little bit and also again seeing the potential Excuse me for just one second while I swing over for just a moment, see what's going on over here. Uh, minor problem with our cameras, but otherwise nothing huge going on here. Uh, more details on your forecast again coming up in just a bit. If you've got weather reports, let's see what's going on in your area. Drop a comment into the, the uh, comment section with your city, state location, and give us an update on the weather as to what's going on in your location. Rainfall from this weekend. Uh, anything in the way of temperatures out there. Let's see what's going on where you're located and give us an idea as to what's happening there. Should be a pretty chilly evening coming up across the Mid-South with temperatures going back into the mid to upper 30s by about sunrise tomorrow morning. So not exactly bone chilling cold, but we will be looking at some pretty chilly temperatures out across much of the Mid-South area throughout the rest of the evening and into overnight. So expecting some pretty brisk conditions as we get into early on Monday morning. So the kids heading out for the school bus stop We'll have more on that coming up here in just a little bit for that particular forecast. But at least for Monday and the early start of it, we're not going to see anything in the way of problems out there with rainfall, at least for right now. But hold on to that umbrella because it's going to be coming in handy coming up in the next few days. Well below normal on temperatures. Sometimes when you get enough cold air sticking around, Close to the surface, it does a very good job of kind of sandwiching those clouds in place, and that's exactly what we wound up with today. And those clouds did a very good job of blocking any sunshine from coming in, so the effect on that was the temperatures back into the lower to mid 40s only, and that was decently below normal again for this time of the year, with numbers going back into about the mid to upper 40s or so. So again, that's where we should be. That's where we wound up. We did not get too much in the way of rainfall today. More rainfall from yesterday. And we're already nearly two inches ahead on rain for the year. And we're already just about not even two weeks into the new year already. So some pretty soggy conditions coming up for the Mid-South in the course of the next several days for right now. So we see, again, the potential for uh, more chances for rainfall into and around the area for right now. Uh, Austin Williams praying we don't have any more storms in a while like that. Checking in from Olive Branch. Well, severe weather is a possibility, especially at this time of the year in this part of the country. That's not anything to panic over, but now's the time to make certain you are prepared and ready to go, uh, especially by paying attention to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you updated as to what's going on out there where it comes to severe weather. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Uh, Marsha Martin, snow anytime soon? No at this point. Uh, doesn't look like it, but in the next several days, there is the possibility that we are going to see uh, the polar vortex open up Canada and drop a bunch of cold air into our area coming up into the course of the next several days. So we should be again seeing the possibility of some colder weather pretty soon. We're also seeing a lot of water making its way downstream. So the Mississippi River will be again on the rise into the next several days and overspreading the bottomlands over into eastern Arkansas. So something to keep an eye on if you are going to be planning some uh, bike or walking travels over that direction. It's a good possibility the gates might be shut as we go closer to flood stage, which is 34 feet. 
and that'll be coming up over the next several days, not just for the Mississippi River at Memphis, but in numerous locations out across the area. All that water we got has got to go someplace, and it's got to drain away into the areas led by gravity downstream into the main collecting area of the Mississippi River, which again has flood advisories and flood warnings in effect for a good portion of the area of the Mid-South, and that does include Again, for the area right around Shelby County and Memphis, a flood advisory taking place to where the river will be cresting right about flood stage in about the next several days. And don't forget that all that water north of us has got to move downstream as well. So we are going to be seeing a lot more water, not just from the rainfall that we got here, but numerous areas of flooding taking place. Take a look at all the red on the map that you see, these borders of watches, warnings, and advisories taking place from the Gulf all the way to the Great Lakes. This was a lot of moisture coming in to parts of the area. So we are looking at some pretty soggy conditions out there as well, and maybe seeing again that potential for some uh, more damaging winds heading in with the potential of more severe weather uh, into the next couple of days. Doesn't look like bad chances, but once again, that's something we really have to pay attention to, especially at this time of the year. Our last storm system, the one that gave us all the severe weather, way out over the Canadian Maritimes and moving out into the North Atlantic. Down to our south, we've got warmer air on the way coming up from the Gulf and northern Mexico. That's going to be our temperature surge, the first one in front of the next storm system, which is getting organized well back to our north and to our west. But here in the Mid-South tonight, we have little, if anything, going on. Again, clean sweeps across the entire area, so dry for Sunday night, Monday morning. More chances of rainfall as we get into the course of the next several days out there for right now. Charlotte Pryor, cold in Clarksdale. Thank you very much for checking in there. 41 degrees in Brighton, Tennessee. Judy Thorpe, thank you very much for that. Thanks to everybody for checking in for the highs and hellos uh, out across the Mid-South. Do uh, appreciate everybody tuning in for tonight to see uh, what's going on. Here in the Mid-South right now, again, the chilliest numbers back in the upper 30s to around the lower 40s. Winds are pretty light, but when they gust upwards of about 5 miles per hour, it is noticeable out there, so we'll see some wind chills into early tomorrow morning, but the winds will be diminishing as we go into overnight, so not looking too bad for breeze, but still pretty chilly with numbers uh, heading back into the mid to upper 30s as we get into the rest of the forecast. Here's what it looks like again as we go into the next several hours into overnight. We'll be looking at temperatures by News Channel 3 at 10 in the upper 30s to lower 40s. Clouds may break up a little bit, but they're going to stick around in some form or fashion into the overnight period. No chance of rainfall at this point, but again, chances for rainfall into the area is what we're going to be seeing later on. So we've got a bit of a dry spell after that, a lot of changes taking place in there for right now. And then by tomorrow morning, kids at the bus stop, Todd Demers on the air with daybreak, temperatures in the high 30s to about the uh, lower 40s out there. And again, cloud-sun mixture. Uh, if everything works well in the predictions, northern Mississippi, southeast Arkansas, you might see some clearing first as that warm air continues to flow upwards from the Gulf. Still on the chilly side by mid-morning tomorrow, upper 30s to lower 40s. A little bit more sunshine breaking through by midday, and that'll bring our high temperatures up into the mid to upper 50s to lower 60s. That'll be just above normal for this time of the year. Now, by tomorrow afternoon and evening, that's where we start to see more chances of rainfall into the Mid-South. Granted, it's not huge, but we will start to see by about dinner time and afterwards some speckles of rain south of the metro and I-40, so southwest Tennessee, North Mississippi, Southeast Arkansas, you'll start to see more of that coming up into tomorrow evening, not for tonight. So again, that'll be the best chance of rain very much on the closer side of things as we go into the uh, rest of the forecast there. Severe threat, not for tonight and not for tomorrow. But as we go toward about Tuesday or so, Monday night, we start to pick up that chance of just isolated possibilities of thunderstorms. Severe chances come into the area Tuesday into Wednesday. It's a marginal threat, and again, that is way down here for the possibility of isolated thunderstorms 
uh, becoming a little bit more energetic. National Weather Service estimates uh, more of a chance of hail than anything else. It is not anything close to where we saw over the last couple of days to where that large, powerful burst of energy coming through the Plain States caused our weather on Saturday. So again, this is nothing compared to what we saw over the last 48 hours. But Here's the key thing to take away from this. There is still a chance of severe weather, so we do need to pay attention to this. We are in prime time season number one for severe weather. So now is the time to be ready before anything happens. Know your safe place to go to. Again, keep your weather radio, fresh batteries ready to go. Make certain your cell phone has wireless alerts. Have different ways of getting severe weather information than just waiting for the tornado sirens to go off. That's not the best way of doing things when the storm system is upon you and the tornado sirens are going off. That's an immediate threat. You need to be able to be prepared for what's coming your direction by knowing what county you're in, knowing what counties are around you. So if warnings start getting issued and something's next door, uh, if you're in Memphis and Shelby County and something is coming in from St. Francis County or Lee County or Phillips County, Arkansas, you need to know about that and that will help you stay ahead of the severe weather threats as we get into the course of the next couple of days. So again, please keep that in mind. Readiness is the best thing that you can possibly do at this point to make certain that you are ready to go when these type of things start happening. So please be prepared for that and keep it tuned to News Channel 3 on there. Uh, Andre Moni, hope I'm saying that right, from Collierville, thanks for checking in. Uh, thanks for the kind reports about the severe weather. We're just doing our jobs, trying to help out, and glad to do so. Uh, thanks to everybody for the reports out there, uh, for everybody else, just to be on the safe side. Uh, numbers again through tonight into tomorrow on the mild side, back in the lower 60s. Chances of rain stay away from the Mid-South until we get into tomorrow evening and even then it's going to be light to sporadic chances at best on there much more mild numbers as that warm front continues to make its way up from the south temperatures back in the mid 60s with cloudy conditions late tuesday into around early wednesday that's where we start to see more potential of showers and thunderstorms might be some earlier chances on Tuesday. We'll keep up to date with what the latest forecast model numbers are saying. And again, by Wednesday, a widespread chance of showers and thunderstorms. Now, that front sticks around with the moisture in the Mid-South area. Another system begins to make its way into the area as we go toward midweek. This one is going to make its way right where the warm front was and then just kind of wash out right over the area. The front that's left over is going to wobble back and forth and that's going to be the irritation point to develop more showers and thunderstorms from Wednesday into Thursday and then once this whole system loses its energy and just sticks around the area we see rainfall chances throughout the rest of the week. So outdoor plans right now that golf game you had coming up, the field trip for school activities, uh, anything in the way of yard work outside, you're going to be seeing a lot more rainfall coming up into the rest of the week. And again, the best possibility of severe weather for right now, Tuesday late into Wednesday. It's not great, but it is still possible. So again, just letting you know about that. That's not, 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 not hyping the weather as some other TV stations in this area have accused us of doing. Professional meteorologists do not do that, and I am a professional meteorologist. We do not hype the weather. We let you know what may be coming your way so you can be on the safe side out there. All right, extended forecast. Now, as we go toward next weekend, things start to clear out, and the polar vortex, the area up around the Arctic Circle where the jet stream circles around and usually keeps the colder air at bay way up toward the poles, it is going to cut loose and it's going to send a wave of cold air down into the United States. Now, the Great Lakes, the Plain States, the upper Mississippi Valley, they could see some bone chilling cold, maybe around the teens to the single digits, even below that in certain locations. We're not going to catch that. It's going to be a glancing blow of cold air for us as we go into next weekend toward the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday and the days after that. These numbers are the optimistic side of the computer models, seeing the temperatures back into the mid to upper 40s or so. Now, by next Wednesday, some lower 40s start to show up. There are several models that are taking us even lower than that. So the colder weather may be on the way back as we head toward the end of January. Could be sticking around for a while or two, but for right now, 
Notice again that the chances of rain end on Sunday morning. Doesn't look like any moisture out there to turn to winter weather at this time, but we will be keeping an eye on that as we go into the course of the rest of the forecast. So again, if anything changes on there with winter weather, uh, keep it tuned to News Channel 3 and we'll let you know more about what might be heading our way. Dry and cold appears to be what we're looking at for the last few days of January, at least that's the way it's looking right now. So again, stay tuned for more on that. All right, updates from the National Weather Service in Memphis. Their survey teams have been out and will be out again tomorrow to take a look at what happened with the damage out there from their Twitter page. First team reporting two tornadoes. One was rated EF1. That's the enhanced Fujita scale that measures tornado damage and goes from EF0 to an EF5. Zero is a very thin, weak, rope-like tornado. And, of course, an EF5 would be a mile-wide, more Oklahoma, monster-sized tornado out there. This was a fairly weak one, but decently powerful enough to cause damage in DeSoto County, Mississippi. If you were watching our coverage early Saturday morning, you saw a radar image of maybe a debris ball being created by that tornado out there into Tate County, into DeSoto County, Mississippi. And another one, the stronger one, the EF2 storm, a little stronger, a little wider tornado from around DeSoto County, straight line wind damage observed in Tunica County, and again, more details and more pictures to follow out there. And that's what I would like everybody to think about watching this for tonight. If you have pictures and reports of whatever went on out there, your information could help the survey teams at the National Weather Service. And as time goes along, information of what you provide out there through the National Weather Service can be used for ground truth to see what happened on the radar to confirm what went on on the ground underneath that radar beam as it was looking at those storms passing its way on through. So what do you do with that information? You go to our website. If you would like to go straight to it to get more information, go to wreg.com slash weather. Scroll down beneath the forecast, and there's going to be information on there about how to contact the National Weather Service in Memphis with your pictures, your video, and your storm reports. If you've got them, please send them on. The more information that they get from viewers and spotters like you, then the more information we can have for future meteorological studies and the safer we can all be because the more data we've got, the more information we can use to help keep everybody safe. This is very important. So if you haven't filled out a damage report yet or even just a spotter report, you saw a uh, funnel cloud at this location moving that direction. It caused this damage or didn't cause any damage at all. The National Weather Service can use all of that. And if you would please report that, again, to them via the different sources that they have out there, social media, on their websites, or just emailing them. Again, more information at wreg.com slash weather. If you've got the information, please pass it along. You can do so anonymously. Uh, but again, location would be helpful on there to let the National Weather Service survey teams and future meteorological studies know what went on, and you can be a part of that. So your information down the line could help save lives sometime in the future. So please consider that into and around the area for right now. Uh, just to be on the safe side to make certain you've got that information in so the meteorologists and personnel here can study it and apply it to future scenarios. It could really help out at some point in time way into the future right there. Austin Williams, has climate change shifted for us? Does it have an effect on our type of weather? Uh, climate change is affecting the entire planet and humans are causing that. Uh, there's no doubt about that at this point to where the fossil fuels that we use causing the imbalance in temperatures, the oceans are heating up, and as that happens, as the oceans absorb the heat, it's a good possibility we will see an alteration of the weather patterns of both hemispheres and all over the planet. The ice caps are melting, Antarctica is melting, Greenland is melting, and as the current around the Atlantic slows down, we may see different weather patterns shaping up. There's a lot of unknowns right now because we're moving into territory that we have never seen before as the carbon dioxide level goes up so high to adjust and cause differences in weather that we have not seen under these conditions, which is why we need to get a handle 
handle on how we power our societies and how we look at our future and what we're going to be doing with a higher heat content of the atmosphere, the different weather possibilities that may be a part of that. And yes, to answer your question, Austin William, uh, it does affect us here in the Mid-South. Uh, it will continue to do so all over the planet. Even though you're not seeing the fires from Australia, even though you may not see sea level rise uh, around the Mississippi River as waters back up, things like that, climate change is still occurring. There is no question about that. So it will be affecting us, yes. Very good question, and thank you for asking on that. Chilly start to the day tomorrow as the kids head back to school, but the umbrella will not be necessary. Very dry, but kind of chilly. Very mild for after-school activities and still no sign of any rainfall for Monday afternoon. So as the kids head home from school and the teachers as well, not seeing any problems out there with any rainfall. So the windshield wipers not necessary on the bus or for the car rider line either. So definitely some good news for the students there. All right, one more check of the forecast before we wrap things up here for this evening. Again, pretty chilly into tomorrow morning, so heading out for that early morning jog or stroll, taking the dog or the cat for the walk or whatever you're doing. Temperatures, again, in the mid to upper 30s out there. Heading into the 40s, and those clouds will be sticking around in some form or fashion out across uh, much of the area. So looking at some pretty dry conditions for now. But, again, going to be seeing more rainfall after this as we go into and around the area for the time being. Again, for the area close to the rest of the week, looking at some very uh, heavy amounts of rainfall possible in parts of the Mid-South. Uh, Steve Montgomery, the fires in Australia have been proved to be set by arsonists. Uh, not true on that. And if you'd like to scroll down on my Facebook page, uh, information about what the Australian claimed was actually conflated information regarding police reports that gave false information on there, and that has been proven by several sources to not be the case. And climate change is exacerbating the problem because of the fact that we are getting warmer, drier conditions out there, and of course because of shifting ideas about clearing things out where it comes to deadfall and things of that nature, we could be drying out climates even faster, causing huger fires, which are going to cause even more carbon dioxide to get into the atmosphere, which is going to heat the planet even faster. So good question on that. But as of right now, the proof of global warming is very well seen with climate change and carbon dioxide levels keeping the heat inside the planet. The oceans are warming. The ca ice caps are melting. There's incontrovertible truth out there for right now showing what is going on, and that is the proof at this point in time. It is happening, and it is humans that are causing the problems. Uh, follow Catherine Hayhoe, great climate scientist, good opportunity to learn more if you want numbers and proof on stuff like that. She'll be able to help you on that, as well as uh, people like Professor Michael Mann, M-A-N-N, -N, good opportunity to learn about that as well. Yale Climate Connections, NASA Climate, NOAA Climate has a lot of great information as well. So if you'd like to see more on that, good opportunity to take a look on things of that nature out there. We'll have an update on the forecast again coming up. We are on time tonight. The NFL was not over by too much as the Chiefs defeated the uh, Houston Texans out there for tonight. And looking again at numbers by News Channel 3 at 10, a little bit on the chilly side for now. But if you can't wait, again, head to our website, wreg.com slash weather. And going to be seeing again the opportunity for more and the potential for rainfall. So definitely want to stay up to date with what's going on with weather out there. Steve Montgomery, global warming is as much disapproved by scientists. Uh, incorrect. A good portion of scientists, a good majority of them, are saying that global warming is happening, and hardly anyone out there is saying that it is not happening at this point in time. We'll have an update on the forecast again at News Channel 3 at 10, and also again throughout the rest of the week, including that threat of severe weather going on as we go into the next several days. So stay tuned for more on News Channel 3. Questions, concerns, ideas, suggestions for our updates here, drop me a line at austin.onic at wreg.com. And, of course, Tim and Jim will be back on News Channel 3 first and four. Jim just back from the American Meteorological Society Conference in Boston where they set record highs over the last few days. Looking forward to hearing about that. Stay tuned for more with News Channel 3 on air and online as we go into next week, and it could be a pretty wet one out there. So stick around for a lot more updates. Thanks for joining us tonight.